Real Country 1430 AM and 107.3 FM, WRDN. Brian Winnikins uh, from the NAFB convention. And thank you to our sponsors, including Wisconsin Soybean Marketing Board, Wisconsin Corn Growers Association, Amplify Health and Synergy Co-op. And joining us, Josh Linville with Stonex. Thought we'd get an update on fertilizers and some of all the other things going on. And Josh, thanks for joining us. Okay, I know fertilizer prices haven't, they've stabilized. They're not as volatile, but... Is there a lot of chaos coming after uh, January 20th? Uh, I'm going to say after January 1st. Uh, there's a lot of trepidation, a lot of worry that as Trump takes uh, takes the helm, that we're going to see more tariffs put in place, and that's going to include fertilizers. I think it's going to take a little bit of action out in the world to actually cause that to happen. You remember during his first term, things did calm down a little bit from a war perspective. So hopefully we get a little bit better relationship with Russia, and we can find an end game with that Ukrainian situation. Hopefully we can get China to back off the Taiwan Maybe we can get the Iran-Israel situation to calm down. But we do know Trump, he likes tariffs. And if he starts to you know, get some egos banging together, he wants to start uh, putting some things against them. Tariffs are absolutely on the table. But from our perspective, it's more of the fertilizer fundamentals that we think after Jan 1, we probably start seeing prices start sliding higher. And it's really on the back of supplies. Uh, nitrogen, we got a lot of supply problems around the world. Phosphate has just been tight in general. Uh, potash is about the only one that seems well-priced and very well-supplied. And so for producers, I mean, could we, I guess, could this be a self-fulfilling prophecy of having high prices if producers are worried about, you know, some of the fundamentals, the incoming administration, so everybody decides, ooh, I'm going to order now. Yeah, absolutely. Demand generally drives the marketplace, right? If all of a sudden everybody in the marketplace runs forward and says, oh, I need to buy all my stuff today, that's self-fulfilling. I, when we look at it, we do think demand is going to be relatively level to what it was last year. Uh, when we're looking at our demand models, we're using 92 million acres of corn and everything else filling in. Our phosphate demand is going to be down just slightly from last year, but phosphate, I'm sorry, potash and nitrogen, I think are going to be up slightly. And we're talking half a percent to a percent, but relatively steady. But we are dealing with some very severe supply issues around the world. We haven't seen the markets react to them yet, but that's, again, once we get into Q1, and the world is backed into that corner where it says, I have to do something now to prepare for my spring season. That's why we're thinking we start seeing this in Q1. So, for, for I mean, is, is this going to be, does the crystal ball say it's going to be a big jump in prices or just something that we, kind of like the normal market activity? I think more, more normal market activity. Uh, when we talk about big jumps, we're talking about 21, 22. We're talking about $1,000 phosphate and urea and things like that. We're not saying that. I, it's going to take a lot of things happening to get back to those type of levels. But I do think we'll start seeing some increase. You know, $25, $50 a ton over the course of a couple of weeks is not outside the realm of possibilities, maybe even a little bit more from time to time. Uh, the biggest thing that really worries me that we could see a big, fast jump is more logistics. If the entire market sits back and says, I'm going to wait, my economics are poor, I think I can force the market down, whatever the reason is, if everybody waits until the last minute and then slams the market with demand all at the same time, logistics are going to have a very hard time keeping up with that. Talking with uh, Josh uh, Linville with uh, Stonex uh, this morning. So should producers be planning now? Planning, yes. And planning does not mean you have to engage. That does not mean you have to buy anything. But it means we need to be looking at it. When the farm economics get poor like this, our natural human inclination is to just kind of bury our heads in the sand and not want to look at it. I don't want to have a conversation. I don't want to talk to anybody. This is what we need to be talking more, not less. When the markets were what they were a few years ago, yeah, the inputs were high, but you were selling your grain for a lot. You threw a rock over the lake and you hit water. It wasn't overly difficult. Now it is. Now you've got to start trying to find your opportunities. So having more conversations and having those conversations with your retailer. What does my soil look like? Where do I need it? What can I go without? What do I need more of? Have those conversations, have more plans in place, and look for those opportunities. Talking with Josh uh, Linville with uh, Stonex this morning from the NAFB convention. As we look even farther along with that supply, I mean, do you, do you see supply issues continuing outside of the first quarter? Unfortunately, yes. I'm still worried we're going to see export restrictions from China. We've continued to see the central government take a stance that we are going to limit exports to ensure adequate supplies for our farmers and lower prices for our farmers. And the worst thing that happened is they did that back in 21-22, and it worked. So now they've seen it proven in theory, in actuality, and now they're going to continue to do that. So anytime we start to see a, spot, a, a sharp jump higher, they're going to start looking at that. We've seen that recently. China sold a lot of phosphate to Ethiopia. 
that has caused their domestic price to go up. And now our conversation is, is that price going to go lower? Or I'm sorry, is that price now going to go higher and cause exports to lower? Uh, Russia, you never know what's going to go on there. They're very reliant on those natural resource exports. But as their continued invasion of Ukraine go on, are we going to lose that? Uh, Middle East is always a tinderbox. That is uh, Josh Linville with the Stonex, and we're at the NAFB convention. I'm Brian Winnikins for WDN.